Something I come across frequently in science is a situation where I have a bunch of different things, say people, <laughs> and we take two measurements on each of those people, say before and after some type of intervention. That intervention might be some type of medication we've given the people, or perhaps we've changed their diet. And so before we might look at their weight and after we might look at their weight, right? Or we might look at cholesterol before and after uh, those interventions. Alternatively, another place that I see these types of data is in economics and politics and social science, where there's some event and you wanna know what happened, what was the situation, what was the sentiment before that event and what was the sentiment, say, after the event, right? So as we are currently in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, you might think about things like vaccines, right? So what were the sens sensibilities about vaccines before uh, the pandemic or perhaps before the vaccine was made available, as well as what are the sentiments after the vaccine was made available. So in both of these types of situations, whether it's science or politics or who knows what's going on, um, we have what's called paired data. Often I'll see these types of data not presented as though the data are linked. So for example, we might take all the pre points and display them as a box and whisker plot. We'll also take the post points and display those as a box and whisker plot. But as we've already established, this divorces the pre and post from each other and that the fact that they are measuring the same individual, uh, but perhaps many, many individuals. So we need a better way to represent paired data than showing the pre and the post points separately. As we've talked about in previous episodes of Code Club, pre-attentive attributes are those characteristics of your figure that your audience will use to decipher what the story is you're trying to tell them. One of those pre-attentive attributes is connectedness or grouping and, and how your data are grouped together. So we have a couple of different ways that people regularly use to indicate the connectedness of their data. For example, we might put um, all of the individuals displayed on the Y axis. And then along the X axis, we could put the continuous variable. That way then we know that those individuals or those points in a row are all connected together because they're kind of anchored to the entity on that Y axis. Alternatively, we could take all the points from the same entities, the same individuals, and we could give them the same color. The downside of that, of course, is that if you get more than five different entities that you're, you're displaying, uh, you quickly run out of uh, the ability to discriminate between those different colors. Perhaps the best tool that we have to indicate connectedness and grouping is to use a line to connect your points. So we can have two points, and if we connect them with a line, then that signals very clearly to your audience that those two points are connected. This type of plot is called a barbell plot or a dumbbell plot. So I was really intrigued by this figure for a variety of reasons. Um, I thought the data were really interesting. And again, it represents this type of paired data and looking at sentiments in August as well as October. Um, I also had some questions about, you know, how would this look if I modified the plot to display the data differently? So. The plot was originally made in Data Wrapper. I don't know Data Wrapper. It's an online tool that a lot of publications use to make these kind of HTML based figures. I do know R. <laughs> and so my goal was to recreate this figure and trying to get the styling as close as I could using R. And along the way, we would learn more R and we could practice our R skills. And then we could have something that perhaps in future episodes, we could modify to perhaps make some other design decisions on how we display the data. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's episode. We're going to create this figure as best as we can in R. I've gone ahead and created a project here in R Studio associated with this vaccine attitudes uh, project, if you will, um, and I've got my R script. If you wanna get a copy of this R script, down below in the description is a link to a blog post associated with today's episode where you can get my final code. Also, I will put in there uh, the data that I was able to download from Ipsos. At the bottom of their figure, they indicated a link where you could go to get the CSV file. And so I have called that in my project, August, October, 2020 CSV. Spoiler, <laughs> they repeated the survey, but we'll start with the August, October. So again, that we can replicate that figure that they had uh, in their initial report. I'll go ahead and start with library uh, tidyverse. And so now we have all the great tools from the tidyverse, ggplot, dplyr, all at our disposal. And we'll get started by reading in the data. So I'll do read CSV because that file is a CSV. And again, it's August, um, October 2020 CSV. We see that it's, it's got 16 rows. So those 15 countries plus the total 
Um, looking at the order of the rows here, they seem to be in the same order as the as the countries in the plot, which is convenient, right? I think they're actually ordered by the percent that would get it uh, from October, right? So India is the highest and France is the lowest. So that ordering is helpful. These column names are not helpful. So let's go ahead and clean up these column names uh, so that they're easier to work with. To rename them, we'll do rename and I will say country equals X period one. And then I will do August equals, and then in quotes, we'll put, I'm gonna copy this because it's so long. And we'll do the same thing for October. So now we've got country, August, October, and I'll go ahead and call this data. And so now we've got that data, data frame at our disposal for creating a plot. So we'll go ahead and start with making that initial uh, barbell dumbbell chart. So we'll say data, we'll pipe into ggplot AES. So along the X axis, we want our percentages and along the Y axis, we want our countries. So we want our percentages um, and then Y we want the country, right? And then our color, I want to be uh, the month. Now the problem is <laughs> I don't have a column percentage and I don't have a column month. So I need to take this three column data frame and kind of reorient it so that I have a country column, I have a month column and a percent column. So the data are wide and I need to pivot them longer to be tidy. So within this pipeline, I'll go ahead and do pivot longer and I will do calls equals minus country. I could say August, October, but that's cool. So we're gonna pivot longer the columns that aren't country. I'll do names to equals, uh, and that will be month, and values to, and that will be percentage. And then we can pipe that into ggplot. Uh, if we wanna see what this data frame looks like, again, we've got country, month, percentage, and we can then do ggplot, and I will go ahead and do geom point. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a figure. So we'll do gg save, and I will call this um, August, October 2020, ipsos.tiff, and I'll do width equals six, height equals four. It was wider than it was tall. So this is a good start. We've got the, the bells, if you want, of the dumbbells. So the next step is to draw that line connecting the bells uh, to do geom line. And here I'm gonna do color equals black because I want the connecting line between the two, the, the circles to be black. So voila, we now have that line. Um, I want those to be behind the points though. So maybe I'll put geom line first and then geom point. And so now we see that the circles are on top of the black line. The next thing I notice about the figure from Ipsos is that they put the percentages next to the points. And so they've labeled them with the actual percentages. So we can do the same thing if we do geom text and we can then, then say AES label equals, and I'll say percentage. And so this gives us our percentages and they actually are right on top of the points. And so we need to dodge them so they're not right on top of the points. I'm gonna add a bit of a dodge to the X axis coordinates. And so that's gonna need to vary for each of the points because you'll notice that for some, like South Africa, October was actually higher than August, whereas for others, like the United States, sadly, <laughs> October was less than August. And so we're gonna need to put in a little bit of logic to tell our, to tell ggplot where to put the, the text relative to its point. I'm gonna go ahead and break into this code chunk for building the plot and remind us what data looks like. So again, this is the data frame before we've pivoted longer and the 77 and 73, along with country, are the coordinates for where those individual points or the bells of the barbells um, are plotted. And so for the text, I need to add a separate column to indicate the coordinates for where the text should go. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these columns to be percent August, percent October. And then I'm going to create new columns, which I'll call bump August and bump October. We'll do percent. August percent October gives us the same output, but again, just different names. We're in good shape there. We can then also go ahead here and I will add a mutate and I wanna create a bump 
August. And I'm also going to create a bump October. And so bump August, I'll do if else. So if percent August is less than percent October, if August has a smaller percentage than October, it's going to be on the left. And I'm going to want the bump to also be on the left then. So I'm going to do percent August minus, let's put in say two to start. And if August is actually larger than October, it's going to be on the right. So I'll then do percent August plus two. This then will create that data, data frame. And we now see that we've got bump August along with uh, percent August, right? So that's again, adjusted depending on whether percent August is smaller or larger than percent October. Now we also need to add in a bump October. October equals if else. So if August is on the left of percent October, then we need to add to, otherwise we need to subtract two. So now we have our data frame uh, with our country, percent August, percent October, bump August, bump October. But I want to pivot this table longer so that I have a column for the country, the month, the percent, and for the bump. And so looking at our pivot longer, this isn't going to work um, because we're gonna get weird output, right? So the results are a little bit funky uh, in that it took all the those four columns and put them into the month column, right? And so we could do something like the month column where we could separate that into percent bump and month, uh, but it's just kind of funky. So to get this pivot longer to work, where we have those four columns that we want to convert to two columns plus the month, we're gonna to need to modify our pivot longer statement. And so we will take names two, and we're actually gonna make this now a vector. And so we still want the month, but we also want uh, a special variable called period value. And so what period value means is we're gonna take percent August, percent October, bump August, bump October. We're gonna split those apart, those names apart into month, which is the latter half, and then percent or bump, which is the first half, right? And so we'll then take values to and get rid of this. And we're going to replace that with names sap because we need to tell pivot longer what character to separate those names on, right? And so we're gonna use an underscore. So again, this might seem a little abstract. So far better than me just kind of trying to explain it over and over with words is to show you what's gonna happen. So we'll go ahead and run this and voila, we've taken that very wide data frame and we've now converted it to have country, month, percent, and bump. And so we have now the country, which will be on the y-axis, the month, which we'll use for the coloring, the percent for plotting the point on the x-axis, and the bump for plotting the percent label uh, using geom text on the x-axis. Let's go ahead and throw this all into our plot. So I need to go ahead and add to geom text, my x being the bump, also, I notice I've got percentage rather than percent. Um, I, I changed that when I was kind of doing this stuff up here with the rename function. So I'll change those percentages to percent. So it looks like my text is working for some of these, but not everything. And what I've noticed back here for Bump October is that I copied this block down and I forgot to change percent August to be Bump October or to be percent October. So let me go ahead and replace August with October. Again, copying and pasting is helpful, except when it's not. <laughs> that looks much better, right? So now we have the numbers to either side of the points, and we can tell that we got the, the right number with the point because they're matching in the color, um, and that looks pretty nice. The sizes are a little bit funky. Don't worry, we'll come back to that in a moment. One thing I wanna take care of right now, though, is that here I have the number 64, um, say for Spain um, in October, but in the plot, it's 64% sign, right? So let's go ahead and modify that. And to do that, I'm gonna make use of the glue package. So I'll do library glue, get, make sure that's all loaded. And then down here, what I can do for my label is I can do glue as a function, percent. I will then put in curly braces as well as in quotes. So what that means is take the value of percent, put it in the quotes, and then add a percent sign. And then we also need to then put the closing parentheses for the glue function. So this is a good start for our barbell plot, trying to replicate what Ipsos made. The next thing I wanna take on is the sizing of the numbers, the line, and the points. One thing about this plot is that the text 
uh, for the, the percentage seems to be about the same size as the points. And the, bell, the line between the bells is rather thick and almost the same size as the points. So what I'll go ahead and do for my geom point, I'll put in here size equals two. For my line, I'll do size equals 1.75. And maybe for my geom text, I'll also then do here size equals two. So it looks a little bit closer to what they had in the original figure. Um, one thing I notice is that the, the text, like the 64% here again for like South Africa, it actually looks to be a little bit smaller in height than the size of the point next to it. So maybe I'll try to make that uh, size a little bit larger. So instead of two, let's go ahead with three. And that looks, I think that those proportions look pretty good. Again, I'm gonna hold off on kind of the positioning of the points because one thing we're gonna do eventually is remove this legend. And what that will then do is to kind of spread things apart. And that might make the, the positions of, of those numbers look a little bit more attractive than they currently are. The next thing I wanna take on is modifying the colors to better match what was in the Ipsos figure. Uh, these are the default colors from ggplot, which I generally don't like. So the function that we use to manually set the colors is scale color manual. And we can do name equals null. That will get rid of the legend name. Ultimately, again, we're gonna remove the legend, so who cares what we're calling it. We can then put in breaks, August and October and then values equals uh, something <laughs> and something. So we'll come back to those colors in a moment. And then labels, we could then say August, October. Again, I'm gonna remove these labels eventually, so I'm not totally concerned with what I put here. Uh, but what we need to get are those values. Coming back to the Ipsos webpage where we got the idea for this plot, I have a little eyedropper color picker widget added to Chrome as a Chrome extension. I can use this extension to highlight over anything on the web page, click it, and then come back up to the extension button here in Chrome, and I can then get the hexadecimal code, right? So it's that gray is 72, 72, 72. And then I can come back, and so that was for August. And then for October, I will then pick a different color this bluish color, come back up here, get that hexadecimal, plug that in there with the pound sign. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with this gray line that's connecting the points, which is E6, E6, E6. And so instead of black, I'll go ahead and put that in. And so it's hard to see that bell because again, I've got this background theme. I'll do theme classic. That will give us a white background. So it's easier to see the gray line connecting the two points. So that looks pretty good. Again, the numbers are a little bit on top of the points, but as we get rid of the legend, those will separate. So let's go ahead and do that now, actually. So to turn off the legend, I will come into geom point and do show.legend equals false. And I will use that as well for my geom text. And I don't think I need it for geom line, but for good measure, we'll go ahead and add it as well. And so now you can see we get that separation and actually, I think we have a pretty nice spacing between the number and the point. Now I wanna turn my attention to the axis labels. You'll recall from this original plot, we, we go 50, 55, all the way up to 100, so by 5% point increments. And also we have the original ordering that was in that CSV file, but that we can see is also the percent that agreed as of October of 2020. So to take care of those country names first, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'll mutate the country to be a factor um, of country and the levels then I will make equal to the data dollar sign country. And so this is the right order, except it's reversed. <laughs> so we can come back up here and around data dollar sign country, I'll do rev. So now we get the right ordering of our data again, India to France. And it again is ordered by the response from October and it keeps total up at the top. Let's go ahead now and look at the X axis. So for that, we'll do scale X continuous limits uh, from 50 to 100, and then breaks, we'll do seek 50 to 100 uh, by five. So this will take 50 to 100, and it will then do 55, 50, 60, all the, the five percentage point increments. So we can now see that we've got our 
values on the x-axis that we like. Again, they put the percent signs uh, right next to the number, so let's see if we can add that as well. So to add those percentage signs, we will again use the glue function, and I'll do labels glue, and then in quotes, I'll put the, that function that we used for breaks. So seek 50 to 100 by fives, and so that's the basically kind of like what goes in the curly braces. So that needs to be in curly braces, right? And then we will put after that the percent sign. And there are our percent signs right with our numbers. Again, looking at the original, there was no X or Y axis label. They have a title and they also have kind of an annotation down here in the bottom left that I would like to add to my figure. We can add the labs function. So we'll do X equals null, Y equals null and I'll then do title equals, and I'll lift that from the plot. And then caption is what will allow us to put that text underneath uh, the figure. So here we'll do, um, I'll grab both of these lines. And instead of chart, I'll say source equals Ipsos. And uh, for now, we'll leave it like this. Good, so we cleaned up those axis labels to get rid of the percent and the country. We have the main title. We have the caption. Uh, the formatting isn't quite right. I want the title to be left justified so that it starts over here in the top left corner of the plot, not of the panel. Um, the caption is also right justified rather than left justified. I can change the position of both of those using the theme function. And so I will do plot.title.position equals plot. And so again, that's aligning it relative to the plot window, not the panel where the data go. And then we can also do uh, plot.caption. Um, and I will then here do element text uh, because it's actually right justified. So we'll do h just equals zero. So h just one is right justified, 0.5 is centered, zero is left. And then again, because that's still going to be um, positioned relative to the panel, I want to also give this a plot.caption position um, argument. And there again, we'll say plot. And again, now we have that left justified. Looking back at the original figure, the title is bolded here. So I'm gonna need to make, make mine bolded. And also this caption uh, the, down at the bottom is actually in italics, whereas the chart Ipsos, or in my case, source Ipsos is a vertical font. And those actually are both gray colored. So I'm gonna use element markdown from ggtext to do that. We'll do library ggtext, and we can give plot.title, uh, we will do element text, and I will say um, face equals bold, that will bolden uh, the title, and then for my plot caption, instead of element text, I'm going to do markdown. Element markdown will allow me to insert HTML inside of the caption. So to italicize, I can use the I anchor. And then I can also use the forward slash I uh, to italicize that baseline. And then I can do a BR for a line break before going to source Ipsos. In the plot caption, I can also add color and I'll say dark gray. I'm not so concerned about getting all the colors just right. And so there, I now have a bolded title. I have the italicized caption along with the source of the data with that base being italicized and the source being uh, a vertical font. There's still a few more things we need to look at. The next one, frankly, scares me a little bit because it's not something I do a lot of, but I kind of like the idea that we saw in the original of having the legend with the data, right? And so instead of having something off to the right saying, you know, this blue is the October and the gray is August, um, to actually label a point, to label an example point, to say the blue points are from October and the gray points are from August, right? I kind of like that look. Um, it's not something I do a lot in my figures. And so this is frankly stretching me a little bit to think about how I would go about implementing that in this figure. I'm going to save this code block for building out the plot we've got so far as a variable that I'll call main plot. And so now I've got main plot and I can easily then add on to that other attributes, other things that I want to plot. And so I'm going to then do that to plot on top of this, those labels uh, that are replacing my legend. If we think about this figure, these labels are connected basically with the X position, the percentage for the total line. I'll come into R and I will take data again. I will filter data 
uh, to get country equals uh, total. Again, it's not a real country, but that's the line in the country column. This gives us our one row data frame for the total category. So we need to pivot this longer again, like we did up ahead, um, up above here. I'll copy that and paste it down here and add that to this pipeline. And I'll get rid of this final pipe. And so now I've got country, month, percent, and bump. I'll call this data frame total, right? And so now I can take my main plot I'll add geom text box. Um, and again, for my aesthetics, for my X, I will do percent month equals country. And then I'll need a column label that I will take from another column called pretty, which I haven't created yet. Um, and so I will do that up here in total. I'll do mutate and I'll say pretty equals if else month equals August. Um, then I'm going to come way back up here where we had those really long hideous names. Copy that down here. Otherwise it's going to be October. So now we have our total data frame with that pretty label that we can use in with geom text box. But before I can do that, um, I need to give it the data frame total because the data frame that we used up ahead, data, uh, doesn't have a pretty column. So we'll get all sorts of errors if we don't do this. So we'll do data equals total. So we're gonna put percent on the X axis. Um, the Y actually should be the country. Color should be the month. And then we'll have label be pretty. So we've got our labels here. They're pretty hideous. Don't worry, we'll get there eventually. The first thing I need to do is turn off the legend on my geome text box. So to do that, I'll go ahead and put some of these things on separate lines. Again, I can do show.legend equals false. Let's turn our attention now to these labels. Um, a couple things I'm noticing. So first of all, the plot is clipping the top of the labels. Ultimately, I want these labels actually above the plot, between the title and the plot. Um, but the plot automatically clips the aesthetics to only show what's in the plotting window. So we need to fix that. Also, the font here seems perhaps a little bit bigger than we really want. Um, if you look back at the original figure, it's total agree hyphen and then a line break before the date in the month. Also, I'm noticing that the, the background for these labels appears to be white, it's opaque, so you can't see the August behind the October. So there's a few things to work on and we'll, we'll kind of work through these. We can go ahead and put in the BR anchor. Uh, Geom text box recognizes markdown and HTML. That will be good. The next thing I want to do to avoid that clipping at the top of the, the figure is we can do chord Cartesian clip equals off, and that will turn off the clipping. So it will show plotting things outside of the plotting window. And so now we see the full text box in all its glory, and it is kind of bleeding up into the title. Don't worry, we'll fix that before we're all done. Next, I want to reformat these labels so they look more like the original plot. I'll start with changing the size of the text. Let's try size equals two. Again, we can modify this later if that doesn't work. I'll then do box.color equals NA. That will get rid of the boundary on those boxes. I can do width equals null. Uh, that will remove the width specification for those boxes. So Geom text box comes with a predefined width. I only want the width of that text box to be the width that's needed to kind of fit all the characters. So that looks a bit more attractive. Um, they're still overlapping on top of each other. I think we still have that white fill, um, but we wanna move those up a notch. I can change the vertical justification of those labels so they're not right on top of the points with vjust, so it should put it at the top of the points and also do fill equals NA to get rid of the background color of those windows. We're getting there. We still have our labels overlapping on top of each other, so you can't totally see them. I would like my October label to be right justified on top of the point, and I would like my August to be left justified on top of the point. I think right now it's basically center justified on the point. So I'll create a column called align. And so if else month August, that is the label on the right then I want that alignment to be left justified. So that's a value of zero. And if it's October, so not August, then that is going to be right justified. So I'll put in a one there. And then down in my aesthetics, I wanna do H just equals align. And now I've got them separated, but I want them on top of the point. 
And one thing we would see if we had that line still, the, the box dot color uh, still being shown is that there's actually a margin or pad padding within uh, those boxes. We can do box dot padding equals margin uh, and we'll do zero, 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 zero to get rid of any of that padding. So that got rid of the padding, but it kind of moved where those labels went to. So I'm gonna change my VJOS to be negative 0.5 to get that bumped up a bit. I think that looks pretty good. It might be nice to bring it in a little bit, um, but I, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks in general. The title though needs to move up. And so to move it up, what I can do is I can add a bottom margin to the title. And again, if we come back to our main plot, the plot title element text can add margin equals margin. And I could say bottom equals, let's say 20. So I think those labels look pretty good. They're not a perfect representation of what was in the original figure from Ipsos, but I think it's close enough. And I, I think we get the, the effect that they're going for. Coming back to the Ipsos plot, the last thing that I wanna take on is thinking about kind of the overall appearance of the figure. Um, they've got these gridded, um, I guess if I look closely, I think the vertical lines are solid and the horizontal lines are dotted. Also the axis ticks, tick labels are gray. So let's go ahead, go ahead and let's modify what we have to better represent the theming that's going on in the Ipsos figure. So I'm gonna go ahead back up here. Uh, for now, I'm gonna remove theme classic. I'll start with doing panel.background equals element blank, which gets rid of those X and Y axis lines. I also wanna get rid of those tick marks. We, we can do axis.ticks equals element blank. Get rid of those. We can make our axis.text.x uh, to be element text. We can say color equals uh, dark gray. And so that gets us a, a gray color for those axis labels, um, and then still the, the black for the y-axis labels. Now we wanna go ahead and put in those solid grid lines for the vertical and horizontal dotted grid lines. I'll do panel.grid.major x element line and color equals gray. I'll do size equals 0.1 because they're really thin and they are solid. Uh, and then we'll do panel.grid.major.y equals the same thing, um, but we'll do line type equals dotted. Overall, I think we've done a pretty good job of replicating what was in the original Ipsos figure. Um, there might be a few little things here or there that you might want to tweak a little bit to make it look a little bit more like the original. Um, I am not giving any critique at this point on this figure. There are things I like about it, there's things I don't like about it, there's things I want to experiment with. So, if you want to see what those things are, be sure that you are subscribed to the Riffamonas channel so that you know when the next episode comes out, because that is how you will find out what I like and don't like about this and, and how we can experiment to see if we can't perhaps make a more effective uh, visualization. The purpose of this was twofold. First, to think about how can we represent paired data using these types of barbell charts or dumbbell charts, whatever you wanna call them. The other thing that I wanted to illustrate in this episode was how we can take a model figure, get the data that they used and try to replicate, reproduce what they did. And along the way, learn a lot about our tooling. I certainly learned a lot doing this about kind of things from the theme function, certainly putting these labels in for the legends, uh, not something I'd done before, but we were able to do that using Geom text. Um, and a lot of our old friends, if you've been watching previous episodes of Code Club. Let me know what you think of this. Um, I would be very receptive to hearing your critiques of this figure, and maybe I can add them to my laundry list of things I like and don't like about it. So down below in the comments, let me know. What do you like and what you don't like? So for everything you don't like, tell me something you do like about this figure, okay? We're not just gonna be a bunch of bashers. We need to be constructive as well. So keep practicing with this. Go out into the wild, see if you can't find a figure that you want to replicate as well, and see how well you do. Let me know, and we'll talk to you next time for another episode of Code Club.